Systemic lupus erythematosus is the topic, or abbreviated SLE. And uh, lupus is actually a very interesting disorder. It has quite a few uh, symptomatology uh, aspects. 70 to 90 percent of lupus cases are in women, and most often uh, young women of childbearing age. There tends to be a greater likelihood in uh, women who are black uh, or Asian also, much greater than Caucasian. And lupus is an autoimmune disorder. That is the primary reason this happens, although in a small percentage of cases, lupus can occur because of a medication side effect. For example, hydralazine is a blood pressure medicine that uh, can can cause lupus-like uh, symptoms and is commonly tested on the licensing exams. So let's talk a little bit about the symptoms and lupus is a multi-organ disorder. It affects a very large percentage of the body. So in order to make it a bit palatable, I think it's appropriate to use a small mnemonic that will help. And the mnemonic is MD, soap, and hair. And I'll go through this and try to break this down into categories to make it easier to memorize. The M basically stands for a malar rash. And this is the classic butterfly rash that you commonly see in lupus that occurs on the face. The D is for a discoid rash. And the discoid rash is a little different. It's actually red patches with uh, scales that can appear on the skin. And these top two basically are, of course, related to the skin, so the skin manifestations of lupus. One more skin manifestation I'd like to squeeze in here is alopecia, loss of hair. Next we have the next category. And the next category, the S is for serositis, the O is for oral ulcers, the A is for arthritis, and arthritis is a big one. I'll put a star next to it because 90% of lupus patients will have arthritis. The P is for photosensitivity, and the N is for neurologic abnormalities. Now the next uh, few letters in the mnemonic are really referring to some lab values that you can associate with. So the H is referring to hematologic abnormalities. And what we mean by that are things like anemia, low platelet count, and of course this can be measured with a simple CBC. The A is important because the A is referring to ANA, anti-nuclear antibody, and that will be positive in lupus patients. The I is for immunologic abnormality, of course, lupus is an autoimmune disorder. And finally, the R is for renal involvement, and in some cases of lupus, you can have nephritis. and some of the lab values will correlate with that. So now let's get into the diagnosis. Well, there's a lot of things to be tested, but I'll break it down really into three categories. The first one is hematologic, and really a simple CBC complete blood count will be able to give you a lot of diagnostic clues such as the RBC count, platelet count might be low, things such as that. The second one is the immunologic aspect of lupus. And in particular, you want to measure these autoantibodies. And there's two antibodies that I really wanted to talk about. The first one is ANA, which stands for anti-nuclear antibody. And it's a very important one because it will be positive in 98% of lupus patients. 
The second antibody is known as an antiphospholipid antibody. And this is also measured. This can lead to thrombosis. So this is an important um, test as it has pretty significant consequences. And finally, the third uh, category of tests involve renal tests. And remember I had just mentioned that nephritis can happen in lupus patients. So the type of tests you would do are RBC casts. Those are very characteristic of uh, nephritis. And also a simple urine analysis will be helpful. Treatment of lupus, really there's two categories, mild and severe lupus. For mild, oftentimes just NSAIDs will be help, helpful enough to uh, uh, be sufficient. And then sometimes also, interestingly, anti-malarial drugs are used in mild cases. And one example of that is hydroxychloroquine. For severe cases of lupus, you're of course going to be using steroids and for example the famous prednisone. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes now. 35 year old black woman has complained of weight loss and fatigue for several weeks. In advising her on the phone as to measures to take before her appointment with you the following week, you ask her to keep a record of her temperature four times a day. She arrives for the appointment with the record. She notes diffusely thinning hair. The temperature graph shows that her temperature has sometimes been as high as 101. However, the high points of the daily graph appear at various times in early hours in the morning or late mornings, not in the afternoons or evenings. She also complains of arthralgia involving her joints of the first and second fingers bilaterally with 60 minutes of stiffness in the morning. A UA yields microscopic hematuria and red cell casts, which of the following most likely uh, is the diagnosis given the clinical findings. Well, a lot of things going on here. She definitely is a young woman and she um, has a um, demographic that is highly um, incident in lupus. She also describes the alopecia and she also has this joint involvement and remember 90 percent of patients have arthritis and lupus and then she's got red cell casts which is very characteristic of nephritis so lupus until proven otherwise next question a patient has fatigue and joint pain and is concerned about the possibility of systemic lupus erythematosus after reading about this condition on the internet. After taking a brief history, you decide further evaluation is appropriate. In addition to the history and physical findings, which of the following lab findings would most support the diagnosis of SLE? Well, remember, ANA and antiphospholipid are the two antibodies that are important to test, so that is choice D. And finally, for several years, a hypertensive 65-year-old female has been treated with hydro hydrochlorothiazide, atenolol, and hydralazine. Her blood pressure has been well controlled. Over the past two months, she has experienced malaise along with diffuse joint pains that involve symmetric sites in the fingers, hands, elbows, and knees. A pleural friction rub is noted on the exam. Lab testing shows that the patient has mild anemia, leukopenia, negative rheumatoid factor, and a positive anti-nuclear antibody. Which of the following would be most appropriate initial step? Well, this is a very good question because most cases of lupus are, of course, autoimmune. But a small percentage of lupus-like symptoms can occur in patients taking certain meds that can cause lupus as a side effect. And one of those meds is hydralazine. So the very first initial step would be discontinue that hydralazine and hopefully that will lead to the resolution of these symptoms.